It's been quite the week for the action figure collecting community. Hasbro's Marvel Legends Giant Man, which was supposed to be an apology for the engine of vengeance, didn't please everyone. YouTubers are getting upset that they didn't get any credit for Giant Man's toe articulation. The G.I. Joe team put up pre-orders for a repainted Trouble Bubble that is $10 cheaper than the original. And Borg from the ACBA had a complete social media meltdown because I shared a screenshot of a comment that he made in the live chat of Hasbro's Giant Man livestream. If it's f me, it's f you too. We're going to talk about all this and more. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. When I recorded my Giant Man video last week, one thing that I didn't touch on was how bad the price of this offering made previous Haslabs look. The Dragonfly kind of did that a little bit by being a much larger vehicle than the Hiss tank but costing $25 less. Yet this Giant Man Haslab is $150 cheaper than the Sentinel and half the price of Galactus which originally sold for $400. Bucks. Sure, you, you can argue that Galactus is much taller and that he came with lights and sounds. But does this really equate to double the price tag of Giant Man? Take a look at all three of the Marvel Legends figures side by side and explain to me why Giant Man is so vastly cheaper in price. I'm sure some people will mention all the additional unlocked tiers that came with the first two figures compared to the limited tiers offered with Giant Man. But that's a mute argument because when the consumer stumps up their hard earned dollars for these items during the crowdfunding campaign, there's no guarantee that they will actually receive any of these unlocks. You have to make your decision based on what is included with the base offering. While I think Giant Man is a little overpriced, it's certainly not extortionate, but it does confirm to me that Hasbro was ripping off the consumer with the price for the Sentinel and Galactus. The thing is, like Galactus, if we put it out today, it would be like over $500. So you're telling us that today the figure on the left would cost $300 more than the figure on the right? Come on, that clip didn't age well. Whatever way you cut it, this new Giant Man should not be crowdfunded by a billion dollar corporation. And anyone who tries to argue the ethics of corporate crowdfunding, whether they prove their point or not, is clearly on the side of the corporation and not on the side of the consumer. When I made my video about Giant Man last week, I had a lot of positive things to say. I thought the figure looked great. I said that I was confident that it would get funded and that it would unlock all of its tiers. And I offered some suggestions as to what I thought would have made for much better unlocks. Suggestions that were very well received by the audience. Despite this, the positivity police keep claiming that my videos are hate fueled and toxic. They also say I never offer constructive criticism in my own videos. Yet my suggestions of some different tiers for Giant Man were exactly that, constructive suggestions. It's a huge leap to say that customer dissatisfaction is equal to hatred. And if you're one of the people making that comparison, then you've truly jumped the shark. How is it that we've gotten to a point in our community when criticism of a toy offering is viewed as toxic hate fueled behavior by people who say that Don't nobody want to hear that shit, bro. They say they only want positive vibes, but then they go around on social media politically profiling people and calling them racist and homophobic. Just because you don't say this stuff on your channel doesn't make you some holier than thou ambassador of positivity when your behavior in other public forums like Facebook is the exact opposite. It just makes you a hypocrite. Sure, I've made jokes about Borg on the 3POA. If you were egotistical enough to think that uh, you'd actually invented action figure photography to the point where you trademark a fucking acronym in a pathetic attempt to gatekeep a hobby, do you not think it would help to actually be good at taking photos? <laughs> but I never fired the first shots at this man. He struck the first blow all the way back during the Engine of Vengeance campaign when he politically labelled me in a public forum and suggested that I was part of the MAGA crowd. And of course this is all hilarious because I'm an Englishman who lives in Australia and doesn't even vote in the US. And he did this because I didn't like a toy car. It's crazy behavior and should serve as a healthy reminder to all of us to seriously consider who we choose as role models in our community. Now we get to the Python Patrol Cobra flight pod that unexpectedly went up for pre-order yesterday. First off, let's discuss the Televiper figure because this one's a doozy. The original 1980s Televiper figure, he was like a Cobra communications guy. He was designed with rolled up sleeves. And the G.I. Joe classified design team were obviously trying to maintain this look when they developed the figure for the six inch range. But then someone on the team decided to give the figure alternate heads. And I'm all for this as it adds some welcome diversity to our collections. But why in the hell didn't they go back and change his arms? 
I guarantee you this figure was originally intended to have Caucasian skin on the arms, but when they decided to offer extra heads with different skin tones, they knew the arms would no longer work. But instead of changing them, they just produced the uncovered parts of the arm in jet black plastic. The fact that they didn't go back and change these just smacks of laziness. And they didn't even need to create new tooling. They could have easily changed the arms with that of a Cobra Officer or Cobra Viper, but they didn't. Another thing that irks me about this product is the fact that the Trouble Bubble doesn't come with a flight stand. This is a small airborne vehicle that the vast majority of collectors are going to want to display in flight mode. So offering this toy without a flight stand, in my opinion, is like offering an incomplete toy for $55. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will say, you know, you're just going to go out and get a, a, a normal flight stand. And I've got quite a few action figure flight stands in my collection, but nothing that looks like it will be able to hold the trouble bubble in a flying pose. Now, I've never been a fan of the Python Patrol or Tiger Force dating all the way back to my childhood. So this repainted version is not for me, but you're all free to pick your own toy poison. I could talk about this being a lazy repaint, but that argument's been done to death. I want to talk about the price and why the new Python Patrol version is bizarrely $10 cheaper than the original Trouble Bubble. I'm sure the positive Pollyannas out there are wondering why anyone would complain about a toy being cheaper, while the rest of us are just annoyed that we got ripped off by $10 on the first offering. And there must be plenty of positive consumers out there because this thing sold out real fast. Yet most of the people who pre-ordered the original classic coloured Trouble Bubble still haven't received their product yet. And that's not a great way to treat your customers, Hasbro. For anyone who wants this, I'm happy for you. And if you don't care that Hasbro is obviously ripping you off with their overpriced items, then I'm happy for you too, because you must not have to work as hard for your money as the rest of us do. So while I am really excited for some of the upcoming G.I. Joe offerings, such as the Vamp and General Hawk and Shockwave, the Python Patrol Cobra Fight Pod is an easy pass for me. Now you can try and invalidate my opinion all you want with your toxic positivity, but I have just as much of a right to be a fan of the G.I. Joe brand as the next guy. And I say the things I say, not because I'm trying to hurt anyone's ability to collect toys, but because I want the toy makers to hear us and to start doing a better job. Loving G.I. Joe and wanting the brand to be better does not make anyone a hater. And to all the numpties out there who say that I'm always negative and toxic, you need to go and have a look at the video I made about the G.I. Joe reveals at this year's San Diego Comic-Con, because it was overwhelmingly positive, as was the vast majority of my Giant Man video. I really like the figure, I just don't like the corporate crowdfunding model. But you losers always ignore my positive comments. So label me all you want, it only makes you look bad. And for anyone who thinks I shouldn't be talking about Boog, well I've never pretended to be the bastion of positivity that he claims to be, while simultaneously levelling baseless accusations at me on social media. It's ironic that your behaviour is very Trumpian. Trumpian? What the f***? I also never gave myself a nickname and put the word nice in it. So if you're going to talk shit about me, I'm going to reciprocate in kind. Because I ain't no pussy either, Boog. And no, I'm not threatened by you, Boog. You're just a hypocrite. To everyone else, and I'm talking to the rational, logical half of the community, what do you think about these toys? Are you backing the HasLab Giant Man? Do you like the Python Patrol Trouble Bubble? Did you order one? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm.